Weed or pest problems? Contact HPC. Say hello to HPC and say goodbye to pests. The Metropolitan Water Board faces a huge damage bill following the flooding of a Victoria Park home last night. Good evening, welcome to the Channel 9 News. Also in the news tonight, Cape Canaveral space technicians are working to ready the historic Columbia shuttle for its new launch deadline tomorrow. And President Reagan is scheduled to leave hospital and return to the White House later this weekend. In sport, it's Wally. Thanks, Tom. Clem, I've took the honours in the first round of local football, defeating last season's Premier's South Fremantle, and Jack Nicholas has taken the lead in the US Masters. Jenny's all smiles as a result of Clemont's performance. That's right, and also we had some lovely rain last night, and tonight expecting more, but tomorrow should be fine. Engineers are still trying to untangle a stubborn computer program lapse which delayed the maiden flight of the American Space Shuttle. However, NASA officials say they're confident the snag can be corrected in time for another launch attempt at 10 to 8 tomorrow night our time. The malfunction occurred 16 minutes before the long-awaited launch last night of the spaceship Columbia. It began long before sunrise when it was clear that a spectacular day lay ahead for the first attempt at launching America's space shuttle. It all seemed to be going perfectly from the start. 2.30 a.m. After being awakened, astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen have their traditional steak and eggs breakfast, then a quick physical. 3.10 a.m., suiting up after getting a final weather briefing. No problems anywhere. 3.50 a.m., they leave the crew quarters for pad 39. 4.30 a.m., they begin getting in the Columbia after final checks in the white room. All this time, the countdown ticks away smoothly toward their 6.50 a.m. launch time. Then the troubles began. The crew has had a, a small problem with the uh, comparison of the uh, backup uh, program. That's a software program in the flight computers. And but within minutes, launch control announced the problem had been solved. Then another failure. A bulky fuel cell, important because it supplies electricity for the Columbia and in the process, drinking water. Within minutes, a solution. But the computer problem returned. At launch control's orders, a fresh set of directions is fed into the computers. The computers, there are four primary and one backup, still didn't agree. The two astronauts had now been lying on their backs in their ejection seats for six hours. Just before 10 a.m., the scrub order came. Next, Wally with a full roundup of today's sport, including the controversy which played the head of the river rowing event this morning. Now you need only one filler for all filling jobs. New poly multi filler is a whole fistful of fillers. It's ready mixed for woodwork, for plaster, and for weatherboard. And with acrylic resins, it will stay there for years. You can even use poly multi filler for cement or brick. Now that will stand up to any weather. New poly multi filler, a whole fistful of fillers to help make you the expert. In an age of compromise, it's reassuring every once in a while to be reminded that traditional craftsmanship can still be found today. Here at the House of Dunhill, the finest traditions of craftsmanship have been maintained for generations. For those who appreciate the finer things, Dunhill. Tonight's sports report is brought to you by Gillette. Firstly in sport tonight, golf and a vintage Jack Nicklaus performance saw the legendary Golden Bear surge into a four-stroke lead 
after the second round of the US Masters Golf Championship being played in Augusta, Georgia. Australian Greg Norman is sharing second place with Americans Lon Hinkle, Tom Watson and Bruce Litsky. The 41-year-old Nicholas, who's already won the US Masters title five times, has a 36-hole total of 135, nine strokes under the card. His golf was tremendous, and here he is at the 16th hole. He's six under par for the day, eight under in all. His tee shot at this 170-yard hole. As good as all the shots he hit today, which many of them were in the superb club. Would you believe it hits the stick? and leaves Jack Nicklaus with a chance to go nine under par. Yes, sir, but Jack Nicklaus failed to equal or break the course record here of 64. He's probably disappointed. The 82nd annual Head of the River ended as a fiasco on the Swan River this morning. Charles McLaughlin witnessed one of the most controversial finishes in the history of the race. The first criticism of the race was the official's decision to allow the event to start at all in the atrocious conditions. The officials said the blinding rain in fact calmed the water and that's why they called a start. And when the crews had crossed a line with Christchurch narrowly ahead of Aquinas and then Guildford, Trinity, Wesley, Scotch and no sign of hail who'd sunk, the controversy really began. The immediate word was that Trinity and Aquinas were protesting and almost immediately the arguments began. These guys saw the red flag, there was also a whistle. Shouldn't yeah. have been run in the first place anyway, it's too bloody rough. Should never have, never have even occurred, it should never have started. The conditions were out there were just ridiculous. Meantime, members of the Christchurch crew were quietly basking in their wind while the referee and umpires were refusing any comment and the coveted head of the river trophy was standing forlornly on a chair. Well, what actually did happen? Here's hail stroke Gary Bosman's version. And we saw the whistle and a red flag, the clocks of the crew as well. Where's the and seven seats. And uh, Aquinas also stopped in Trinity. Is that a confusion out there? And in support of Gary Bosman's version, it's understood crews were told if the referee raised a red flag, it meant a restart. In the end, the final word came from the regatta committee president and Christchurch headmaster, Peter Moyes. is as announced. It stands as it was posted. As it was posted. Right? Charles McLaughlin for Channel 9 News. Right. Thanks, Chaddy. Atrocious conditions and a protest marked the running of the 1981 head of the river on the Swan this morning. The race was run, but only just. Paul Jenkins reports. Conditions deteriorated steadily through the morning as the early events were run. The second eight, programmed just before the main event, was postponed when the shells filled with water and the crews had to return to shore. The seven head of the river crews took to the water but were forced to wait more than an hour for conditions to settle enough for the race to be rowed. Hale and Aquinas began well and were leading when they claimed they heard a whistle, normally a signal indicating no race. Both crews stopped, but Aquinas rowed on after realising the race was still on. Hale, though, filled with water and sank. They protested after the race, but their objection was overruled. Heavy rain and wind squalls turned the race into a shambles. Christchurch won narrowly from pre-race favourites Aquinas with Guildford Grammar in third spot. This afternoon, Hale's headmaster, Dr Ken Tregoning, issued a friendly challenge to the other eights in the head of the river. Dr Tregoning said the school accepts the decision of the judges, but he feels sure some of the other crews would like a chance at a friendly rerun. He suggested it could be held as part of a mini regatta when this morning's postponed race is held. Christchurch and Aquinas were involved in a close finish today on the Swan for the head of the river title. The eights had to overcome choppy water, wind and rain. And the winner also had to survive a protest. Christchurch and the yellow singlets beat Aquinas by half a canvas with Guildford third. Trinity finished fourth, Wesley fifth, Scotch sixth, and Hale failed to finish. The winning Christchurch crew rode back to the applause of the crowd. While the Christchurch oarsmen were being congratulated, a protest was being entered by Hale, whose boat stopped after what they believed was a false start and later founded. The protest was dismissed.
Stroke of the Hale 8, Gary Bosman, explained the incident. The reason we stopped, we heard a whistle like all the other crews heard a whistle of Guinness, Trinity and a number of others, and uh, we saw a red flag, a coxswain saw it, we looked and we saw a red flag and we all stopped.